Spider-Man is one of the most famous superheroes in history and needs no introduction. So instead, we'll just get straight into this topic. And this video is going to go over which lands and core would be best for Spider-Man. Now, for those who don't know, lands and cores are organizations that have rings, and these rings give their wearers superpowers and are powered by different emotions. And in order to wield a power ring, you have to have a strong connection to the emotion that powers it. Now, the different lands and cores are fear, love, avarice, will, hope, compassion, and rage. And there are also two other lantern cores, the Black Lantern Core of Death and the White Lantern Core of Life. And all of these are going to be considered as valid options for Spider-Man, but we're going to decide which one is best for him. And with that out of the way, let's get to it. Fear. Let's start with the most unlikely and just get rid of it straight away. There is only one time in Spider-Man's history where he would ever even come close to being classified in the Fear Lantern Core, and that is when he was bonded with the Venom symbiote. Back then, he became more bloodthirsty and angry, as the symbiote was fueling his negative emotions. And for the first time ever, he seemed to truly enjoy the violence. Now, normally, Spider-Man tries talking first, and then, if necessary, he resorts to violence. Although, to be fair, violence does always seem to be necessary. But while he has the symbiote on, he revels in his power and the fact that he can hurt others with it. I give up trying to be a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. But at the same time, this realization that he was doing this, that he was starting to enjoy the violence, was something that was so out of character for him that it made him realize that the symbiote was changing him. And it's actually what made him get rid of it. Because he didn't want to be fueled by hate and enjoy hurting others. And that rejection of the symbiote signals to me that he is not right for the Fiat Lantern Corps, and that he would never even accept the ring in the first place, even if he could connect to it. Rage. The Red Lantern Corps is also not for him, for pretty much the same reason as Fear, as again, the only time that the Red Lantern Ring would really be right for him was when he was bonded with the Venom symbiote. Now, to be fair, he does have his moments of rage without it, and he has on several occasions gone down a path of vengeance. The most infamous, of course, is when he hunted down the criminal who killed his uncle. Though ultimately, when faced with his uncle's killer, he showed mercy and decided not to strike out against him in anger, mainly because that isn't what his uncle Ben would have wanted. And though this is actually what first led to his crusader Spider-Man, him being a hero was never really about revenge. It did start that way to be fair, at least to a certain extent. But after this beginning, and when he finally began to deal with his grief over his uncle's passing, he moved on from his anger, and his life as Spider-Man became more about protecting and helping others, and his strength was no longer fueled by anger and wanting to get revenge on the criminals of the world. And the Rage Lantern Corps is all about getting revenge on injustice and those that have wronged you. And if we're honest, that's really more Batman than Spider-Man. And though the characters do have a lot of similarities, that is one of their main differences. Well, that's in the fact that one is a billionaire, and the other one is flat broke and named Spider-Man. Will. Now, most superheroes automatically qualify for the Will Lantern Corps, since it takes an enormous amount of willpower to become a superhero, and even more to stick to it, as it destroys a person's professional and personal life. And this is more true for Spider-Man than most heroes, because Peter Parker's life truly suffers as a result of him being Spider-Man. And taking that into account, along with the fact that to qualify for a Green Lantern ring, you have to be able to overcome great fear, well, he certainly qualifies in that regard, as Spider-Man is a very brave man. But the problem is that Spider-Man is very easily swayed. For example, in the Civil War, Tony Stark was very easily able to convince him to tell the world that he was Peter Parker. This was his most furiously guarded secret in his life, and it was all that kept him and his loved ones safe. But after a few chats with Tony, he told everyone everything, the entire world. I mean, he could have just told the secret organizations of S.H.I.E.L.D. and then no one would have known who he really was. But instead, he told everyone. And as you probably recall, this actually led to the Kingpin finding out his identity and then attacking him. But when he wasn't home, his assassins attacked his Aunt May instead, and she very nearly died. Which really goes to show just how serious it was him telling the world. And it took very little convincing on Iron Man's part to get him to do it. And frequently in comics, Spider-Man changes what he believes based on only one conversation with a character. I remember he once started doing paparazzi photos after the Daily Bugle was sold and the new editor thought that this best suited his talents. And he is fine for this for ages. He's actually quite good at the job and he even manages to make some money. Not a fortune, but for once he's able to pay his rent on time. 
But then, after one conversation with Harry Osborn, he suddenly thinks that it's an evil and horrible job that preys on people, and immediately resigns from the position. All because Harry had some paparazzi follow him as a kid, because he was rich. And I get that Harry doesn't like paparazzi because of this, I mean, who would? But the thing is, Peter Parker is doing what he needs to do in order to survive. I mean, if Harry feels that strongly about it, then why doesn't he go and pay Peter Parker's rent? He's rich enough after all. But rather than stick to his guns or just stick up for himself and say, look Harry, I need the money to eat, which is pretty understandable, I think. But instead of this, Peter folds like a chair and completely follows Harry's logic, even going so far as to destroy a flash drive with a photo on it that's worth $1 million, instead of just giving it to the editor. Which, if I'm honest, is just dumb. I mean, he'd already taken the photo, and it was only a photo of a famous guy with his new girlfriend. And they weren't even doing anything bad. They were literally just standing next to each other. The only reason it was worth a million dollars was because no one knew who he was dating, and it was a mystery woman. And though you could argue it's still an invasion of privacy, he's a celebrity, and celebrities have to accept there's going to be a certain amount of invasion on their privacy. That's why they earn so much money. And even if Peter Parker didn't want the money for himself, he could have easily given him the photo, took the million dollars, and then given it to charity. And that money could have actually done a lot of good to help a lot of people. But he doesn't do this, he just destroys it to make a dramatic point. And stuff like this happens a lot. Spider-Man frequently disregards and changes his beliefs that just two seconds before, he believes so strongly. I mean, it's not literally every comic, but he does do it a surprising large amount throughout his history in Marvel Comics. Seriously, it sometimes comes across like he can't think for himself. It's just whatever person gives him advice, he automatically follows. Which is incredibly weird, since he's a super genius. Now, admittedly, in a lot of cases, it's probably just bad writing. But it's happened enough in Spider-Man's history that we can count it towards his character. And it's because of this that I don't think that the Will Lantern Corps is right for him at all. Now, it is true that a person should never be too rigid in his beliefs. You should be flexible and accept what others tell you. But Peter Parker just never seems to stick to any of his convictions. In fact, even him becoming a superhero was like this. One moment he was using his powers to make money as a wrestler, and the next he completely changes from this avarice hedonistic lifestyle and becomes a selfless superhero. Now, that is undoubtedly a good thing, and as we all know, he just suffered a major tragedy, so it's understandable that he would make some large life changes. But it still shows that he changes his mind a lot, usually under the influence of those around him. It has actually been referenced before by Captain America in the Civil War event when he was talking to Tony Stark that Spider-Man desperately needs a father figure and so because of this he takes advice from pretty much anyone and I can kind of understand that but the man needs to grow up and be his own man. And while willpower is something that he definitely has a great deal of, I mean he's got a lot of willpower and it's certainly not the worst Lantern Corps for him. But still, I'm just not seeing him with the Emerald Ring and there are some other lantern cores which suit him much better. Death. Spider-Man is very much one of those heroes who believes that death is the worst crime that you can commit, and it's never the solution, and Spider-Man does anything he can other than kill. Now, that isn't to say that he hasn't killed before. He has been in comics since the 60s after all, with dozens and dozens of different writers, so it has happened here and there. In fact, I'm actually working on a video listing everyone that he's ever killed. And if you're actually watching this far enough in the future, then the link to it will be in this video's description. But even still, the people that he did kill were exceptions, and very much not the norm for him. In fact, whenever he teams up with Wolverine, as he has done quite often, he is constantly telling him not to kill others, and he acts as a kind of Jiminy Cricket for him. In fact, saying that Spider-Man is the conscience of pretty much any team he is on is not that much of a stretch, as using power responsibly is what Spider-Man is all about. And like the Fear Lantern Corps, while wearing the symbiote, he may have eventually gotten to like killing, at least if he had worn it for longer. But he's never been anything like an acolyte of death, or even someone who thinks death is the right solution. Hell, he doesn't even agree with the government executing criminals. However, with that being said, Spider-Man himself has died in many different ways. For a list of the five best, check out the links in this video's description. But because of the fact that Spider-Man has previously died, and then come back to life, he can be possessed by a black ring, even if he doesn't worship death. You see, the black rings can take control of a person who has been resurrected, and they control their bodies and have access to their memories. Which, incidentally, would actually be a great story to watch unfold. I would love to see Spider-Man get one of these black rings. 
But this possession can really happen to anyone who's dead or who has been resurrected. And it doesn't really matter about the type of person they are. So it's not really a basis for a Lantern Court for him. And since Spider-Man doesn't like death at all, the death Lantern Court just is not for him. He doesn't agree with any of it and in no way worships it. So it's just not a realistic possibility. Avarice. Now, Avarice is completely wrong for Spider-Man. It's a very villain ring to begin with, but in Spider-Man's case, this is extra true. I mean, as I said previously, he turned down a $1 million paycheck for little to no reason. He is frequently broke, rarely able to pay his rent, has very limited or non-existent savings, and while he does have the skills needed to become insanely wealthy, I mean, he is a super genius, but still, he frequently sacrifices that success in order to continue being a hero and to help others. Now, to be fair, when he first got his powers, he was a very selfish man, and he used those powers to make money as a wrestler, with little to no regard for others. I mean, we all know the story. But that was a very long time ago, and he has changed greatly since then. And besides, that was more of a knee-jerk reaction to him getting powers. Once he saw the reality of his selfishness, with his Uncle Ben dying, he then saw the error of his ways and changed. And while it is true that in more recent years in comics, Peter Parker has made more money, working at Horizon Labs, for example, made him quite well off. Even still, it was never really about acquiring more money and acquiring more possessions. It was never really about the wealth at all. It was more that he loved science and loved that he could make a living off of it, while at the same time using his inventions to help people. And so I think we all know, and I think we can all agree, that this just is not the right Lantern Corps for Spider-Man. Hope. Now, when I first asked myself what Lantern Corps Spider-Man should be in, my very first thought was Hope, as it just seemed like the right Lantern Corps for him. But then I started writing this video, and the more I thought about it and researched it, the more I realized it just isn't for him. Now, the two reasons for being in this Lantern Corps is either to have an enormous amount of hope inside yourself or to be a symbol of hope to inspire others. And usually, you need to be a combination of both of them. But Spider-Man doesn't really have that much hope in him. Now, I know a lot of people are immediately going to say, yes, he does. And I'm not disagreeing with that. Yes, he doesn't give up and he does believe in himself, but only to a certain extent. There are many, many times that he just wants to quit and give up. Now, normally when he gets in his low points, he'll get a pep talk from one of his friends and get back in the fight. But the point is that he's always saying things like, I don't think I can beat him this time, or he's just too powerful. And while we can say, yes, that's just writers trying to be dramatic, it still is him giving up hope. It may only be giving up hope for a moment. I mean, as I said, he always gets back in the fight. But the point is, he is giving up and he does this a lot. And generally speaking, to have a hope ring, you have to be unwavering in your faith. And even these little bits of giving up would stop you from having the ring. But Spider-Man is constantly wondering whether he should even be Spider-Man at all. As I said, his hero lifestyle has destroyed a great deal of his life, both professionally, and it's also destroyed relationships with both his friends and girlfriends. And on many, many occasions, he's wanted to not only give up the hero life, but give up his powers altogether. In fact, I remember once in the Spider-Man cartoon that I watched as a kid that he did exactly that, and he drank a formula to take away his powers and become a normal human once more. Now, ultimately, it didn't work, of course, and he eventually went back to being Spider-Man. But the point is that he decided to give it all up. And it's not the only time that he's done this. And whereas you could argue that all of us have our low points, and that losing faith here and there isn't the end, so long as it's only slight pauses of doubt, but not giving up altogether. And I agree with you that we all do this from time to time. I know I definitely do it. But Spider-Man giving up his powers? That's not some momentary doubt. Momentary doubt might be not wearing the costume for a while, taking a break from crime fighting. But getting rid of your powers is 100% giving up. So Spider-Man just doesn't seem to have the huge, overwhelming light of hope burning within him. There is a light and it is very, very strong but it's not to the level that you would typically associate with a Blue Lantern Court member, as they have to never give up, no matter what. And as for being a beacon of hope to others, well, he is, and he isn't. There are a great deal of people who believe in him and the work that he does, as he does help a lot of people and he gives a lot of people hope that it's not all doom and gloom out in the world. 
I mean, a great example of this is in the recent Spider-Verse film, where he dies and there is a public funeral, and thousands of people turn up, many in Spider-Man costumes, to show respect for him, the things that he has done, and what he stood for. So clearly, Spider-Man means a lot to a lot of people. But the problem is that there's also people like J. Jonah Jameson who are constantly going on about him being a menace. And he's not alone. Characters are constantly ragging on him in his comic for being irresponsible and causing problems. In fact, there was once a comic event where a team of police officers started leaving little Spider-Man badges at crime scenes to frame Spider-Man for murder because they didn't like the fact that he was just doing whatever he wanted and not following the rules. And the reason I mention it is because clearly there's a lot of people who don't agree with him and don't get inspired by him. Now, the main reason a lot of this stuff does happen is because Spider-Man's comic is all about responsibility. So because of this, he constantly needs to have characters calling him out so that these issues can be addressed. It's not necessarily that he doesn't inspire some of these people, it's just the way his stories are told, we need to have those moments so that he can address them. And although it is very entertaining, the problem is because of this happening, Hope just doesn't sit right with me for Spider-Man's Lantern Corps. It's not that he couldn't potentially fit into it, because I think he could. Because as I've said, he does have a lot of hope in him, and he embodies enough hope that he definitely has the potential for the ring. And I'm not saying that he 100% could never have it. I'm just saying that I don't think it's the right one for him. Now, some of you may disagree that I don't think this is the right one, but if you give it enough thought, I think you'll come to the same realisation that I did because although it may not seem wrong for Spider-Man at first, the more I thought about it, the more reasons I could see for him not qualifying, especially when there are the other lands and cores that he's better suited for. Compassion. Now, Spider-Man definitely has a great deal of compassion. I mean, it kind of goes hand in hand with being a superhero after all. You don't go out risking your life to protect others if you don't care about them. And a main part of compassion is sympathy and understanding, which is essentially what caring is. And Spider-Man does have more than most, as he is one of those heroes whose main and pretty much sole motivation is just helping people. He doesn't have any ulterior motives at all. He's not after fame, glory, or even recognition. He'll help people even if he gets none of that, because that's what he wants to do. But the problem with this Lantern Core is that Spider-Man doesn't always allow himself to have too much compassion. Yes, he does care about others, but he also seems to keep them at a distance, emotionally speaking. There are many tense situations where characters are at their lowest, when he could connect with them on a deeper level and express compassion. But he doesn't. Instead, as he himself says, I uh, have a habit of making bad jokes in tense situations. And this to me signals that either he is not compatible with a compassion ring, or at the very least, not yet ready for the compassion ring. He keeps himself at a distance from others with jokes, rather than fully embracing his compassion for them. And it is understandable. I mean, we all do it to a certain extent. I know I do. As we all have our walls we keep up to keep others out. We let some people in, yes, but we only let them in to a certain degree. And it could be because he has lost so many people that he cares about that he can't allow himself to care that deeply for many others. Or it may be a sign of Spider-Man's immaturity that he makes these silly jokes and laughs rather than getting real with a person. He is depicted as quite young in most of his incarnations, after all. And speaking personally, I would never let anyone get too close when I was growing up. It's only with age that I've started to let my walls down a bit, and even then, only with a select few people. It's something that we all do to one extent or another. But because Spider-Man is keeping this distance, I just don't think a compassion ring is quite right for him. Yes, he has compassion in spades. He really does. And I'm not saying he doesn't. Spider-Man cares deeply for all those around him. But this last step of accepting compassion 100% seems to elude him. Not all the time, to be fair. In fact, he does connect with villains all the time, and he does quite frequently bear his soul to them. But this usually only happens at the most extreme and emotional of moments, but not all the time, and not normally as Peter Parker. I mean, as we all know, these compassionate moments aren't supposed to always happen in extreme, over-the-top situations. That's actually quite unhealthy for it to happen like that. You should be showing compassion just on a small regular basis. It's much better for you and the people you care about. Now, I know a lot of you will disagree with this, as he does get real with people here and there. Both Mary Jane, Aunt May and Harry Osborn have all seen this side of Peter Parker from time to time, as he cares very deeply about them all. And while I'm not disputing that, and I'm not saying that he lacks compassion because he certainly doesn't, but I still think he'd be unable to connect with a compassion ring fully, as he just doesn't fully embrace it in his life all the way. 
And with these rings, the emotions kind of need to be pouring out of you in order to connect with them properly. And even if Spider-Man could fully embrace his compassion and get a ring, which is very possible, I still think that this next Lantern Core would suit him better. Love. Now, this was actually not my first choice for Spider-Man. It's not where my mind first went to at all. But the more I have thought about it while making this video, the more I've realised that it actually makes perfect sense. Spider-Man's whole crusade was made out of his guilt of being unable to save his Uncle Ben, the person that he loved most in the world, next to his Aunt May, of course. So basically, him becoming Spider-Man initially came out of his love for his uncle. He wanted to protect others as he couldn't protect him. And more to the point, I think he wanted to make him proud. Using his powers to be a wrestler and get fame and fortune really isn't what Uncle Ben would want for him. After all, with great power comes great responsibility. This was the doctrine that Uncle Ben tried to instill in Peter, and his love for his uncle inspired him to be worthy of him, to live up to his uncle's expectations and be the man that he always wanted him to be. It's also mixed with a side of vengeance, yes, wanting revenge on the criminals of the world. But unlike Batman, who lets the vengeance take over and guide him, Spider-Man doesn't let his anger rule him, and even if he does want revenge, he doesn't want it as much as he wants to live up to the standard that his Uncle Ben showed him. And as I said, he does have compassion for those around him, he's just unable to completely connect with them. But he still cares deeply about them and for them, which is what love is. And in a million different ways, in pretty much every Spider-Man story ever told, we see him showing his capacity for love. Even when supervillains have hurt those around him and are going down a path of evil, he doesn't just turn up and kick the crap out of them. He tries to reason with them and get them to come in of their own volition, because he wants to help them get their life back on the right path, which again is a side of love. It's also kind of compassion as well, but compassion and love are very, very closely entwined. Not to mention how strongly Spider-Man feels for those closest to him, both friends, family and of course his lovers, such as Mary Jane and Gwen Stacy, and I don't think that his love for either of them could ever truly die. And it's not just people, I mean as his catchphrase goes, he's the friendly neighbourhood Spider-Man, meaning he cares about his community, his neighbourhood and his city. After everything, I still love being Spider-Man. And so I think the love, ultimately, is the right Lantern Corps for Spider-Man. Although he does also seem like a good candidate for the White Lantern Corps of life. While love does work for Spider-Man, I also think that he could easily wield a white ring. Because he really is a character that is just bursting with life. Seriously, out of all of the Marvel Universe characters, he may actually be the best candidate for this Lantern Corps. He is debatably the most fun-loving and life-embracing hero Marvel has. Next to Deadpool, of course. And I do believe that he has a shot with this ring. Now for those who don't know, the White Lanterns are actually the most powerful there are, as they have the combined powers of all the other colours of the spectrum. Which means they have the powers of all the other Lantern Corps. And I also think that he is the perfect person to wield such power, as Spider-Man knows that with great power comes the need to wield it responsibly. And I genuinely believe that Spider-Man could. And I don't think he'd become obsessed with the power and let it consume him as many others would. And I don't think that he'd abuse the power, he would use it responsibly and to help people. And I can't really provide any more reason than that. It's just that with Spider-Man's personality, it seems like a good fit for him. He not only lives his life to the full, but he actively works to save others, not only as a hero, but as a scientist, creating and transforming the world around him to improve the lives of others. Which shows his admiration for life, as he's dedicated every aspect of his own life towards preserving it. And with a White Lantern Corps ring, he could also do an immeasurable amount of good for the world. So that is my choice for Spider-Man. He could be in either the Love Lantern Corps, or he could be in the Life Lantern Corps. He does come close in some of the other Lantern Corps to be fair. As I've said, hope, compassion, I think he does have potential. But out of all of them, I think that Love and Life make the most sense. Now I think I am leaning more towards him being in the Love Lantern Corps, even though a white outfit would suit him much better than a pink one. But in truth, I honestly can't decide which is better. But that is where you come in. This video is all about discussion, and you may agree with what I've said, or you may disagree with what I've said, and think that Spider-Man belongs in a different Lantern Corps altogether. In fact, I imagine a lot of you will have some very strong feelings and a lot of things to say about me dismissing him for both hope and compassion. But whatever your thoughts are, please let us know in the comments. And please include your reasons as to why. It's okay to disagree with me, this is a discussion video after all, and it's something that a lot of people are going to have very different opinions on. 
but it really does help if you give your reasons as to why you believe what you believe, and it makes it a lot more interesting to read. And I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.